These pictures were sent to me by Annabelle. Thank you so much. The price of butter is constantly going up. With that, you can save so much more money if you do it yourself. So happy Sunday. We're about to head into the Walmart. So let's go into the store. I hope that you decide to, you know, store more food. What is this, preparedness month? I don't know, whatever. Everybody say, it's preparedness month. September's preparedness month. Every month is preparedness month in my book, okay? With the way things are looking, the economy about to burst wide open. So first things first, we end up on the canning aisle. They have a lot of stuff in here compared to the last time I was in here, y'all. They even had wide mouth pint size jars. They didn't have a lot of them. I took the three that they had. That's all they had and I took them. But they had a bunch of other pint size um, cases. So I didn't take the last of everything, just of the wide mouth. And I got some lids as well that were wide mouth and regular. Oh, can up this butter. If you want to can with me, go grab all your supplies and don't forget your butter. Okay, guys, so we made it back from the store. I had to take a whole detour. This should have already been started, but nonetheless, we are here now. So I'm using unsalted sweet cream butter that I got from Sam's Club. And I have eight of these. They come four in a pack. See that? So two sticks of butter should give you an eight ounce jar of butter. I'm also using my magnetic wand for my lids, my debubbler right here. You're gonna need some kind of a spoon, a ladle to scoop with. I'm using my jar lifter, my funnel. This is my Presto canner right here. So make sure that your gauge is on zero before you start. Make sure you check everything on it before you start. This is your weight right here. You won't need that until your steam is vented for 10 minutes straight. And another thing, make sure you check the bolt where your gauge is to make sure that it's on tight before you start canning. Now this right here is your vent. I already told you that. In the back right here, is where you have, some people call it the nipple, I call it a navel, you know how little kids' navels used to poke out. So here it is right here. When it's up like this, that means your pot has built up pressure. And once your canning session is done and it cools down some, it'll go down. Do not open your pot, your lid, until that happens, until this is back on zero. Over here, I have my lids in a pot, just simmering in a very low heat. Right here is the, it's actually a water bath canner, but I'm gonna use it as a stock pot to put my butter in. And I've already washed it out. Y'all saw when I bought this out of Walmart. So now the long work starts taking all of these out. I'm just putting the jars into the oven on 225 degrees and they'll be getting warm while I am melting the butter. So you also wanna make sure you have some vinegar in a bowl with paper towels, wipe around the rims of your jars. So right now I have my pressure canner already turned on but it's not on a high heat it's on just a low heat to get the keep the water hot and then over here i have the butter already starting to melt and i have it down low and let me give it a stir before i add the rest of them so you don't want to have your pot up too high you don't want to rush the process just go with it, okay? 
So the two ways that I'm going to do, I have watched so many, who knew there were so many how to can butter videos. So I'm doing two ways, okay? One way is by pressure canning it. The other way is to not use a pressure canner at all. And you can still store it on your shelf. One way is gonna last, the pressure canning way is going to last five years plus. The non-pressure can way will probably last you three years to five years. Okay, I'm doing pint-sized jars. So that processing time is 75 minutes. You also wanna know if you are pressure canning, what your altitude is and how many pounds of pressure you need to be pressure canning at. That is very important. You can um, look that up on USDA or you can call your extension office and they are so willing to help you with any questions that you have. They'll even test your pressure canner for you to make sure that it is working properly for free, you guys. So we're going to let this melt on down and we'll be right back. Okay, you guys, you see I changed my pot out, right? That tall pot was just getting in my way of stirring the way I want it to. If you're not doing a lot of butter, you can get away with using, I'm using my Dutch oven right now. That's what this blue pot is. And as you can see, I still have some clumps here or there of uh, butter. So once that melts down just a little bit more, then I'm gonna turn my eye up. So now you can see the butter is pretty much melted down. There are no more clumps in it. So now I'm gonna turn my eye up to a medium high. And right before it starts to boil, that's when you're gonna turn it off and you're gonna start canning it up. So this right here is what I was talking about. And all it is is a clarified butter, okay? So as you can see, it's not boiling, but it is separating. Now with this foam, you can skim that off just like that. So I'm gonna take my jars out now, because you want them to be hot. So I wanted you to see it's starting to bubble, but now you see, and I've turned the eye off. So as soon as you start to see that bubble, turn it off because it's gonna continue to cook. Give it a little stir before you scoop it. That way you're separating things. They'll join back up later. I will pick this jar up, but it is really, really hot. So you guys, you're gonna bring it up to the rim right here. That's your one inch head space. Note the color of my butter and note the color of this one, the ghee. There's no difference. Let me go over on the other side behind my camera and make sure because my battery's running low so it might turn off. It's so much. Okay, you guys. So, I was not able to fill all of these up. I did not have enough butter, which is fine with me. That leaves me with two, four, six, eight of these pint-sized jars right here with butter in it. As you can see, it's down at the bottom, but we're about to clean these off, put the lids and the rings on and put them in a can. But first I wanna show you, when you get to this point, if you don't want to can, what I did was I had a little bit left of butter that wasn't gonna fit in my pint size jars. So I have my half pint jars right here. I've already done one and I filled it to the inch head space. I'm now I'm going to do this one. And this was just what I was going to save for, because you can still use it. And underneath it, 
it's butter. See that? So all we gotta do is just pour it in. And what's left? We might have enough for another jar. All you have to do is dap you up some vinegar, which I have in here. Wring out any excess so you don't get that in your jars. Then you're gonna, this jar is hot. Then you're gonna clean around it, the sides and, Lord, I just put it in there, the top. I told y'all I'm clumsy. So now we're gonna go back here with our lids, grab one, and we're gonna place it on here just like that. And we're gonna put our ring on there just like this. And all you have to do is keep doing it like this right here. Now, if you want this to seal, turn it over like that. Let it sit for about five minutes. Come back and then do it again and then turn it back over like that. That's gonna create that same seal that you're gonna get when you pressure can your jars. So first you just wanna go in, stir it up. In case any air pockets are in there. Clean your jars, your lids, and it is hot so be careful. Fingertip tight. Well, now we got that done, like so. We're gonna put it into the can. So now we're gonna go into the pot. Remember, you don't want the water to go above your lids. That's a no-no. We are pressure canning. Now, some people do water bath can their butter. I saw, I saw the videos. Y'all saw some, you gonna see some videos out here. Do what makes you feel comfortable with your food, okay? And making sure you're not getting that botulism in your food. Oh, I forgot to put a ring on. Talking y'all. See what y'all did? I ran my child out of here because I was like, I'm trying to make sure I get this right, okay? But um, yeah, no, I saw somebody put it in the microwave to each his own. I feel like if you're nuking it, you're taking a lot of nutrients out of it, okay? So let's put these in. Oh, that's so pretty. So pretty. So I'm gonna take y'all off the stand. That way y'all can see. Oh, all you have is this at the bottom. Those are your fats. It's all good. They're all gonna mix together. And as you can see, my water is not over my lids, okay? You only want around two inches of water, but please read your pressure canner um, information so you'll know what you need to be doing. So as y'all can see, I have moved my pressure canner over here because I got tired of doing all that walking. I don't mind changing stuff up. If it makes it easier for me because I have back problems, and when you're canning, you are on your feet a lot. See how the water has come up some? So I had a little too much water in there. That is easy fix. All you do is go back in, remove your jar safely. Going to scoop some water out so it will be where it needs okay. to be. Okay, so in retrospect, if that's the right word, you should have at least an inch of water in there because see how, see where the water is now on there. Okay, the water is about right there. That's about where you want it because you don't want it going over. So now we're gonna put the remainder of our vinegar in here in hopes that our jars won't look cloudy when it's all said and done. So now we have our jars in here. We have eight 
pint size jars in here. We are going to can them for 75 minutes. Okay, so let's get our can top on. Make sure you turn in it, line it up with the arrow, and then turn it to lock it into place. So as you can see, the steam is coming out at a consistent rate. Don't put your weight on yet, okay? Now you're going to vent that for 10 minutes. So I have my timer set for 10. Don't, that's, that's my coffee beeping, y'all. Um, I have it set for 10 minutes. So once that's done, then you can add your weight to it, okay? And I'll come back when we get to that point. Okay, so the timer has gone off. Go ahead and turn that off. And now it's time to add your weight to it. And all you're going to do is just plop it on there. Don't be afraid of that steam coming up. You're not gonna hold your hand over it. All you're gonna do, let me stand over here so you can see. Your gauge is still on zero. And you're just gonna put that on there right there. So, leave your eye up high until your gauge shows your pounds per pressure you're supposed to do. For me, mine is 11 because I am above a thousand feet. If you are below that, then you would be a 10. But check your ball book. If you don't have a ball book, go on the USDA website or call your local extension office, okay? Once mine gets to 11, then I will dial down my eye, I will turn it down some to regulate it so it'll stay at 11. I don't want it to go at the extension office. They told me don't let it go past 13. I don't want to go below that. Otherwise, you have to start all over with your processing and I don't know what that would entail because I've never done that before. I am pretty much where I need to be, which is at an 11. I don't want to go over 12, but I'll hit 13. I'm okay. But monitor your stuff. Don't walk away from your canner too far away because all it takes is a split second for it to go from where it needs to be on pounds per pressure to above it or below it. Okay, so the timer just went off. We held steady at 11, between 11 and 13. So do not do anything else right now. Turn your eye off, okay? Don't do anything else. Let it come down on its own. Don't take anything off. Don't take your weight off. Let your gauge go down to zero and make sure that your nipple slash belly button is down, okay? Once that's on zero and once that is down, then you can open it up. So we'll come back when that happens. Just twist it and then you're gonna turn it away from you so that the water and the steam is not on you because I'm good for dropping hot water on my foot. Okay, they're already popping and pinging. I wanna give a special shout out to Homestead Heart and Wanda from Deep South Homestead because those were the two channels that I most followed. The method of not canning it at all is Deep South Homestead and the other way is Homestead Heart. So thank you guys so much. And they're still cooking. That's what you're seeing. And it's not a lot that's separated that's down here. So it's not a lot, a lot for me to toss. Now this is the one that I bought from the store. You see that? Guys, you can do this. You can do this. So we have eight jars and then we still have 
This one right here that's gonna go in the refrigerator that we'll use for now, along with the other ghee. They look like they've all already sealed. Good morning, it's the next day. It is September 6th, so you can see I've already cleaned up my jars and I've labeled and dated them. Y'all, this came out so, 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 so good. So good. Even the little one that um, I didn't can, I, I canned it without using a canner. Look at it. It looks just as good as the other ones. Everything sealed. They were sealing, they were popping and pinging before I could even get them out of the canner. This was so easy to do. So I hope that you try this. And I'm about to store these in my pantry. Um, how exciting.